Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm just here to review another season of CBS The Survivor, season 33, episode number one, so let's just get down to it. Pretty much, the contestants are split down the middle into two different tribes, the Orange Millennials and the Purple Gen Xers, and the players had no idea that they were going to be split into two generations, and they all seemed pretty excited. The youngest player in the game, his name is Will. He is a high school student and he is 18. The oldest player is Paul, who's 52, and he's grumpy. Yeah, and he's not a big fan of millennials. Not at all. And so, Jeff Probe says, listen guys, all these supplies are out here on the beach. You guys have to grab them, bring them to your mat within a certain amount of seconds, and this is what you're going to have to use for 39 days. Now, Generation X dive straight in. They grab just about everything. I'm not sure if they grabbed the chickens, but I know that the Millennials did, but they forgot to grab the fishing gear. So Jeff Probes asked Paul, how come you grab the fishing gear? And Paul was like, listen, the fishing gear will benefit us for 39 days. And Jeff Probst asked Will from the Millennials, why did you grab the chickens? And Will says, well, the chickens lay eggs. And I'm just like, I mean, he had a point, but I think the group did need the fishing gear as well. I did also see a problem with the Millennials coming together and all trying to make a decision together instead of like branching out and grabbing all the stuff. But as Jeff Probst well, Jeff tried to warn the Millennials and I feel like the decision not to grab the fishing gear is going to come back and bite this group in the butt. Now. Figgy, Jay, and Taylor are all linking up to become an alliance. Zeke says he's an 80-year-old man at heart. He said that the kids on his tribe can't do anything, and in his opinion, they never held a real job. Now we're going to get to Generation X, where Paul believes that Gen X has a group of people that have strong opinions, strong core values, and they work hard. And they have thinkers. Ken warns Paul that you cannot underestimate the millennials. Ken is very supporting to his group. He's uplifting. And he spearheads the first shelter construction. Because remember, the first one got destroyed, so they had to build another one. But Ken was the head of that first construction thingy. Jessica, during the supply run in front of Jeff Probst, found a little envelope that contained something called the Legacy Advantage, which basically says that if the holder makes it to day 36, they get an advantage that will help them through the game, but if they are voted out before that time, they have to pass it on. But Jessica said she won't have to worry about it because she will be in this game until day 36. So we're back to the Millennials. Figgy looks at the game like this. She could emerge victorious with a million dollar check and a husband. Figgy becomes paranoid when some of the other millennials go off. I guess she feels like they're looking for an idol or something. I mean, her paranoia is warranted, but the others weren't looking for that. And as I said, Jay Taylor and Figgy are all close. They call themselves the Triforce. Hannah sees that there's something going on between those three. And she doesn't want to be the odd man out at first because then she'd be a big target. Michelle proves to be the one person in the group that everybody comes to and everybody talks to. And that's going to be very, very beneficial for her in the game. Back to Gen X, Rachel is a little bit over eager and it rubs everybody the wrong way. Sunday especially. David reveals that he doesn't like the outdoors or bugs, but he likes gameplay. He's basically, as they say, afraid of his own shadow. He's paranoid. He thinks Ken and Paul have idols. I'm just like, dude, you need to chill out. 
But he tells Chris and I forgot who the other dude was that if he hears their names pop up in a conversation, he'll tell them and he hopes they do the same for him. Generation X believes that you have to put your work into it to achieve your goals and they believe that the millennials just talk about their dreams and if it doesn't work, then they dream another dream. I mean, each approach is pretty valid in my opinion, but... So, on the millennial side, the shelter isn't finished because they spent more time playing around and running into the water and then all of a sudden the winds pick up. Then the storm overnight is brutal. It's pouring rain. The wind is beating the crap out of everything. So we get to Generation X. Cece's a little bit upset. She said it never stopped raining. I think Dave said something about it being cold. Jeff sent them a tarp, but he said, listen, you guys can use this tarp because of the weather, but once it's over, you better bring it back because if not, then you guys are in trouble. And Chris is very weary of this whole tarp gift. And he basically says that the weather will make or break his group. Zeke looks around the camp and he's just like, all of this looks a mess. Then all of a sudden, Jeff Probst pops up. He basically tells the millennials, listen, I'm evacuating you guys. And on a side note, he gave them a tarp as well. He said, I need you guys to collect your personal belongings. We need to go. And the millennials left before the winds picked up. But the Gen Xers were warned and they left as the winds started picking up. And all of that footage of like the winds like blowing and the shelters falling apart and the clouds and the sky and all the different colors of the lightning. That was all beautiful. It really was. It kind of sucked though for the tribes because their shelters all fell apart and it kind of reminded me that footage of the footage that I remember seeing during Survivor Australia when there was like a mudslide I think it was and the tribe had all this rice and the rice washed away so they barely had any food and without that rice they were pretty much close to starving it was a pretty rough season and I remember Elizabeth Hasselbeck the one that was on The View, and she's also on Fox News. On a side note, she was a part of that season. So Gen X returns to their beach, and they learn that a tree fell on their shelter, and thank God they were safe somewhere else. And on a side note, I read an interview with Jeff Probst and Entertainment Weekly, where Jeff Probst said that when they evacuated the groups, they put them in two different, I think, rooms or trailers or something like that there were no beds no pillows no blankets nothing i'm just like that kind of sucked but at least they were safe from the storm so okay so dave is paranoid that he's on the chopping block he reveals that he's afraid of death he says that he's going to work hard because there isn't much hope. And the next thing you know, he's off looking for an immunity idol. And he's blatant about it. He's looking at it while everybody else can see him. And I'm just like, what is this dude doing? So at this point, I'm thinking like Dave is in really big trouble. So Zeke emerged as the leader. He led the building of the shelter. He helped his group make fire without flint. Hannah really notices that division, and she really pays attention. Calls the division the cool kids versus the misfits. And she gets together with Mari, and they both agree that it's important to keep the numbers. And they need to tear the popular group apart. Mari started spreading rumors around that Figgy is aggressive and is running the show. Why do I get a feeling that all of that is going to come back and bite Mari in the butt. Because at this point in the game, no one is sure who they can trust at the moment. But anyway, they have an immunity challenge, Gen X versus the Millennials. The Millennials won. Chris from the Gen X side blocked the two Millennials. And I was just like, that is so messed up. But it didn't help the Gen Xers because the Millennials won the immunity idol and they won Flint. So, Gen X re returns to their beach. They're upset. They said the challenge was a disaster, and Rachel and Dave are pretty much in trouble. 
Brett says that he is shocked that Generation X lost that competition. Sunday and Jess should have been the two working on the puzzle. Dave says that he feels like he's on the chopping block and he says that nobody trusts him and he is willing to write whomever's name down to keep himself safe. Then Dave tells on himself that yes, he was out looking for an immunity idol, but he didn't find anything. And this is when I learned that there's like an alliance of like six people all together that are controlling the vote. And I'm just like, this is so messed up, to be honest. Um, Rachel, C. We learned that Rachel and Cece are hip to what's going on. And when the others see them kind of standing together, moving their lips, talking, I guess that's probably one reason why they decided to nominate Cece. But then again, that's probably not even the reason either. At this point, I'm thinking, you know what, the person that needs to go home is Dave. I'm like, yes, Rachel messed up, but this dude was caught looking for an immunity idol, which means he cannot be trusted. But that's not the way that things turned out. We learn at Tribal Council that Jessica has some type of bacterial infection in one eye and it spread to the other eye. Dave says he doesn't want to go home. Everyone feels like they could go home or maybe some of those people are acting like they feel a little bit paranoid so that others won't see them as threats. I mean, I'm just kind of grasping at straws with that explanation. But um, it did seem like that. I don't think that everybody was paranoid that they were going home. Rachel felt like... Rachel realized that she was in trouble and she was just trying to apologize to the others, telling them, you know what, I'm sorry if I offended you guys, if I rubbed you the wrong way, I just want to make amends, and apparently there were people that didn't want to hear it because the vote came down to one vote for Dave, one vote for Sunday, three votes for Cece, and five votes for Rachel, and Rachel went home. And Jeff Probst was just like... The goal for Generation X now is to figure out how you're going to recover against the Millennials. I'm looking to see how that is going to happen because Generation X is a mess. I thought the Millennials were a mess because they didn't pick up the fishing gear, but Generation X, I'm shaking my head at that generation. In closing, I don't blame Cece if she feels some type of way after receiving three votes during Tribal Council. Episode 2 is going to be very interesting because it appears that somebody on that tribe is having a heart attack and from the looks of it, it looked like it was either Paul or I think the red-headed dude, Chris, one of those two was having a heart attack. So we'll see how it goes and Dave seemed to be really happy about that in that little package, so... Let me know what you guys thought about the first episode and who you're rooting for and who would you like to see emerge as the sole survivor. Me personally, I don't know at this point, but I do like Zeke, Ken, Hannah, and Mari so far. I'm sure that list will grow, but those are the four that I like so far. But anyways, I'll be back later on to do another review of... Scream Queens on Tuesday, um, Survivor for Wednesday. I'm also going to work on the cast interviews for Big Brother Over the Top because one of my fans asked me to review it, so I'm going to look at it. Those reviews will probably be late because the episode airs on West Coast time, not East Coast time. So I'll have to figure out how all of that works. But as of right now, I'm going to be reviewing that one. So I love you guys. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>